My name is Paul, and I've lived internationally now for 10 years. I've experienced all sorts of different cultures. I've experienced culture shock and culture stress, and I've talked about what culture shock and culture stress are in previous videos. Today, I'm going to give you an academic definition of culture, explore that a little bit with you, and then I'm going to talk about a practical definition of culture, an easy way for you to look at the world around you and to fit in with a new group or new people that you're living with. I'm Paul, and welcome to my channel. Ethnology is a study of culture. And there's all sorts of scholars that have given all sorts of definitions. Academically for me, culture is a group's shared experiences and values. Any group can have a culture. And groups can vary in size. A group can be as small as a family unit, two, three, four, five people. A group can be a community. A group can be a workplace. Any group of people, no matter the size, can share experiences and values. There are two commonly accepted diagrams that explain culture. You have the culture onion diagram, where you have an onion, and you see the outside of the onion. Outside the culture, you see different artifacts, the tools people use, the technology, the language they speak. That is all on the outside of the onion. You start diving deeper into the onion, into the things that you can't see. You can't necessarily see history or shared experiences, but they're there. And as people tell stories, they express these new experiences. And it's those stories, the chosen stories, that tell us what the values are, the deeper things. And those values guide what stories people tell. It guides what people are interested in. Shared experiences lead to those values. And as you get deeper from values, those values are chosen because people have a certain worldview, a certain way of assuming how the world works or how people work in general. That is the onion model of culture, where you're looking at the outside and you get deeper and deeper and deeper into things that you can't necessarily see but are there. You also have the iceberg concept of culture, which is similar to the onion model, where you have at the tip of the iceberg part that you can see, you had the five F's. The five F's of culture in the iceberg model are food, fashion, famous people, festivals, and flags. Those are the things that you can see very easily in just about any culture, any group of people. However, culture goes much deeper than that into shared experiences, values, and worldview. Groups share values. So what are values? I'm going to give you two examples today, and I'm going to let you think about some of the values that you have personally. So I've been to Tunisia, Senegal, and France. In Tunisia, one of the big values is Jiao, having a good time, having a good vibe and atmosphere. People ask each other on the street, how is your Jiao? How is your vibe? And they respond, my vibe is good, my vibe is not good. It's really important here to have good vibe. The other way people use Jiao in this culture is people just want to have a good time. You see this in the summer when people go to the beaches, to the clubs, to the places they like to hang out. Part of having jiao is going to the cafe or to a salon de thé and enjoying a coffee with a good friend. Jiao is a very high value here and people spend big money just to have a good time. When I was in Senegal, togetherness was a huge value. Whenever someone would say thank you, we'd say nokobok, we're all in this together. It was very common on the street during mealtime for people to be eating their rice out on the sidewalk, out in the street. And if you walk by somebody eating a bowl of rice, it's customary in Senegal to be invited to go eat that rice with them. And if you don't go eat a little bit of rice, it's very rude because Senegalese value togetherness. You share what you have. No matter if you have even just a little bit, you take what you have and you share it. Togetherness was a value there. It's these values that shape worldview and affect the stories and the way we dress and talk. In Tunisia, you'll see how Jiao affects the way people express themselves. You'll see a lot of bright colors at weddings. You'll see people blasting music at their festivals, their birthday parties, their weddings, 
to see how Zhao is expressed as a value in the sheer amount of people that go to the beach during the summer and how people dress and go to weddings and the loudness of the music during these events. In Senegal, you see how togetherness is expressed through the artifacts of large bowls of rice and how people eat out of the same bowl together. Values create experiences which create artifacts such as the bowls in Senegal and the beautiful colored dress at weddings in Tunisia. So practically, what does this all mean for you? What does this mean for cultural adjustment? The way to adjust into a new culture is to find what you have in common with the people around you. This is the web model of culture. Culture, yeah, it's very, very messy. It's not about being inside of an onion or on top of an iceberg. Culture is about who you're connected with and what connects you with them. What makes a group is those shared experiences and those shared values. For example, when I came to Tunisia, I needed to find something right away that connected me with other people. And there's one thing around the world that connects everybody. Food. Whether you have the same food or not, it doesn't matter. We have a global culture of people that eat. Everybody in the world eats. That is a human culture thing. We have something in common. We all eat. We also all sleep and we all drink water. We have things in common. But food is one of those things universally that we can talk about and that I've used in the past. Find that connection with people. We can talk about food. I can talk about the food from my home and you can talk about the food from your home and boom, we have an instant connection. And as we talk and share about food, we'll find other things that we might be interested in together. For example, my friend and I might both like spicy food. We have those things in common. And as we look at his family, his family also likes spicy food. We have a spicy food culture going on. When we look at a bigger nation, for example, Tunisia, Tunisia has harissa. And so as a nation, we really enjoy spicy food. Not everybody will fit into this big web of spicy food, but because there will be other things within the culture that connect us with other people in our shared environment, in our group. But these things, these small values, these small experiences are what bring us together as a group. Groups are a very vague thing. What's important about a group is that they have shared connection. What this means practically for you when you get into a new group, a new culture, a new society, find a shared connection. Find something you really enjoy about that people or that place that those around you also enjoy. The easiest way to get into a group of people is to have something in common. When you look at the logo of my company, you'll see that it's a rocket, but it's not just any rocket. You see, we are all a part of a culture. We grew up with a worldview of our family, of our nation, but that worldview isn't completely who we are. Culture is very vague and big. You can't pinpoint somebody into a culture exactly. And so you have the big culture, and then you have your own personal values and experiences. And you know what? Your big culture, the group that you are coming from, has things in common with the group that you are going to. And so we see this bigger arch coming around here, this bigger circle. And you are this little circle with your own values and experiences. And your whole goal when you're going into a new society is to find out what things you have in common with your home culture, what things you have in common with the new culture, and what these two cultures have in common together. When you figure out what connects you to the new culture and society, you will fit in, you'll find friends, and you'll start to integrate into the new country, into the new people group. So what does culture mean to you? Thanks for joining me today as we talk about what culture is. Be sure to put your ideas down below in the comments and like this video. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.